All right, everyone, welcome back. Well, in last night's election, both of Oklahoma's U.S. Senate seats were on the ballot. Incumbent Republican James Lankford winning his reelection bid against political newcomer Madison Horn and other opponents. He joins us now live, fresh off the wind. Senator Lankford, good morning and thanks thank for being morning. here with yeah, us. Good morning, glad to be here. Happy to have you here. How are you feeling after last night? A little tired like everybody else from watching yeah. results. I was up till very late watching all the results and back early again trying to be able to track it and keep up. And I had about 200 text messages with people just pounding my phone to be able to say congratulations and now what and what's about to happen. So tracking all that and just trying to be able to keep up with people. Yeah, and that is why you are here today, because yeah. we want to hear from you as we look ahead here to a new term. What is on your agenda? What do you see? What are some of your priorities? Yeah, all 77 counties I traveled to during the campaign time all had the same questions about inflation, about the economy. It came out in different ways. Sometimes it's the price of diesel. Sometimes it's the price of fertilizer. Sometimes it's the price of eggs. Uh, sometimes it's first time home buyers are saying I can't afford to get a home now because home mortgage interest rates have gone, they've doubled in the last 12 months. And they're saying, what happens now? I can't afford a home. So there's lots of questions dealing with that. We got to be able to deal with the price of energy. That's one of the first things to deal with. If we don't increase the supply of energy, we're going to continue to have very expensive manufacturing, transportation, just people getting around uh, what happens in farms and ranches. Uh, so we've got to deal with the energy prices and figure out how we actually increase the supply. And then we've got to deal with the border. Uh, there's a lot of people still asking the questions, hey, we have 200,000 people a month that are illegally crossing the border and have for two years now. That's never happened in the history of our country. So people are saying, hey, I don't mind immigration. But hey, this seems to be unchecked and there's something that's got to be done on that. So we've got to have a better dialogue with this administration to say how we're going to solve this. So give us a little bit of insight on the work that you're doing specifically to address those issues like that, like inflation, yeah. which is top of mind for Oklahomans sure. and, and across the country. Sure, I've actually been in a bipartisan conversation now for weeks dealing with this permitting issue. If we don't allow more permitting on federal lands and waters, that's about 40 percent of the proven reserves uh, that are in the country or on federal lands and waters. We've got to be able to get access to those to be able to increase supply. We can't go to Saudi Arabia and ask them to be able to increase their supply. We need to be able to do that here and be able to be in control of our own destiny. So there's a group of us been talking, meeting, trying to be able to figure out if we can get to a bipartisan resolution on that. Uh, we've got the same issues on immigration where I've been in constant co communication with this administration. We've got to be able to enforce the law first, but we've got to be able to fix legal issues like how we handle the asylum process. So all this, all this is already in process as far as a dialogue to try to bring solutions. I understand not everyone has the same solutions they bring, but I think a lot of us commonly look at those and say that's a problem. We should sit down and try to figure out what's the common ground solution. Let's take a look at a national perspective here. Control of the Senate and the House kind of still hanging in the balance as we wait for more results to come in. If Republicans were to take control of one or both, what do you see, what do you hope that the party will be able to accomplish. Yeah, there's a big shift if you get a breakdown in government. We all remember in 2011 when Republicans had just the House of Representatives, Democrats had the Senate and the White House. It forced both parties to be able to talk to each other. Budget agreements were very different in 2011 and 12 than they were in the years before because now both parties had a voice in that. If we win just the House of Representatives, uh, that changes a lot of the way spending is done because all taxing, all spending has to originate in the House. So the House has leverage with the White House and the Senate to be able to say, hey, I'm, I'm not going to approve things because we're not going to start it unless we can get some common ground to control our spending. Uh, so that changes. With the Senate, it changes dramatically in how nomination process is done. And quite frankly, we've got hard problems like Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. We've got to be able to stabilize those programs long term. Uh, the best time to do that is when you have divided government to be able to sit down. Both sides are forced to be at the table. Uh, it's very clear the American people are not united on many issues on how to be able to solve these problems. But it's also pretty clear the American people see there's a problem. Only 21 percent of the country thinks the country's on the right track. So the vast majority of the people in the country say, I, I may not know what the solution is, but it's not what we're doing now. And so the election shows the American people are divided on this. We need to sit down and be able to solve these problems. Yeah, so how do we do that? That was going to be one of my next questions. There is yeah. a lot of division right now in politics in America from both sides. Sure. How do we fix that? How do we reach that common ground? And, and what are you doing to make sure that we work together, that our leaders are working together. Well, honestly, I've already been doing that in my campaign even. My campaign message was this, let's remember for 250 years, we were we the people. We have to decide these issues. We don't all agree, but we've got to be able to sit down and be able to work things out. I tried to bring the rhetoric down even during the campaign to say, let's not have so much heated rhetoric. We're still Americans. We're going to disagree on issues, but let's be able to talk this out. Second thing is, we got to not stereotype each other and say all those people, they all think that. That's just not true. Let, let, let's sit down and be able to talk things out. 
I, I'm very conservative. Our state is very conservative. I come with that conservative perspective because I believe that's the best set of answers to help all communities of all backgrounds, of all faiths, of all uh, races, to be able to come to, uh, to benefit our economy and their opportunity. Well, I bring that and other people have disagreements on it. So let's find common ground areas and let's actually get some things done in the days ahead and be able to work through this. But you, you, you can't start it by yelling at each other. No one's ever convinced me of anything by screaming at right. me. And I have people that say, hey, I want you to be angrier and louder. And I'm like, has anyone ever won you over by screaming at you? So let's actually sit down and talk these things out. Let's not stereotype each other and let's be able to work some things out. Okay, uh, we could talk about so many other things, but we are running out of time. I just do quickly want to ask you uh, one final thing before we go. Your final message to all of Oklahoma and the voters who didn't vote for you in this election. Yeah, I still represent all four million Oklahomans. Uh, we have folks that call our office all the time. They have questions about veterans issues or Social Security or immigration or whatever it may be. And they say, hey, I didn't vote for the senator. Can I call? We always laugh and go, absolutely. We represent all four million Oklahomans. When people have questions or ideas, bring them because we listen to all voices and all opinions. We may not agree on things, but I want to hear people out. And so I'd encourage people to still stay engaged and still stay involved and don't just vote and walk away. As a community, we've got to continue to be able to serve each other in the process. That's what makes our country so powerful and great. Okay, Senator Langford, congratulations Thank on your you. win. Thank you for coming in. I'm sure we'll be speaking again. Come Look back anytime. We appreciate Look you. To it. Thanks.